Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. All right. So Richard Sherman, a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Very weird feeling, right? We've, we've had a few of those recently. Obviously, the weirdest were, you know, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Brown. We got another one with Richard Sherman. Uh, and kind of the mindset I have in this is it can't hurt right? It's really hard to imagine this being a bad move by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Doesn't mean it will definitely work out perfectly, but at the very worst, you have a veteran, you know, depth player, which, you know, you're not paying that much money for. So it seems like it's a kind of a low risk, high reward type move. And it is worth mentioning before, you know, when we last saw him in San Francisco, he actually was playing pretty good football. So let's start off the film study with something like this. So I think this is actually very fascinating. A lot of what people had talked about with Sherman is, well, how well does he fit into this Todd Bowles scheme? Well, one thing that I just thought of watching tape is, well, you know, Sherman is a very uh, quick guy who can, you know, his very quick footwork and can tackle very well. Hey, he can rush the passer well. And for Todd Bowles, he wants people that can rush the passer. You know, everyone's going to blitz at some point, right? That's just how Todd Bowles operates. So Sherman will fit that aspect probably pretty well. On this play, he is going to be blitzing. And it's worth mentioning this, you know, might not be the best example of this because it's actually a screen pass. So they're not really that concerned about Sherman. But just watch how he does this. He is quick off the line and he would have created quick contact had, you know, that not been just an unfortunate play call to go against them right there. So that's an aspect of the Richard Sherman game that I think could factor in for Tampa Bay is the fact that he is someone who they like to blitz. And honestly, for someone who maybe doesn't understand the playbook just yet, just because it's a new scheme and, you know, new language you have to learn, all that stuff, uh, they might just have him blitz more just because when you're the guy who's blitzing, you don't have to learn that much else. All you have to do is know to rush in and try to tackle somebody. When I'll go on to this play, this is definitely going to be an aspect of his game and what he can bring to Tampa Bay when he does see playing time is just stuff like this. It's just sort of the high IQ stuff that he brings to the table. It is going to be man coverage, although he plays man kind of like how most people play uh, zone, so it's not too different here. But the concept uh, you see on the screen, the guy who Sherman's supposed to be covering is running a go route, so Sherman has to obviously make sure that he doesn't get beat by that route. Watch, right when this play starts, he's giving some space for sure, and he's currently in a position where he's doing a very good job of making sure he's not going to get burned deep, especially she wonders only a single safety deep. That's definitely a route that Goff could potentially throw to, but Sherman's making sure that that does not happen. What's interesting is that Goff is going to throw to the route that's uh, further underneath. And what's great about Sherman is just his high football IQ. This is something that's always been great about him and kind of why he was underrated in the draft. One of the reasons was because people didn't just didn't realize how smart he would be heading into the NFL and how many great reads he could make. Watch him just notice the throw and while it's kind of a no man's land, he was the guy who was looking at the quarterback, not a receiver. He was. So that's not typically how that works out, especially, you know, not when you're in that situation where you're covering a go route. This is the stuff that, you know, say what you want about, you know, maybe he is getting up there. Speed does matter a lot for a corner. Even if you try to downplay it, it still matters. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, if someone's running a go route, they can still blow by you if they're faster than you. You know, ask Kevin King, who played a route pretty well against Scotty Miller in the NFC Championship game, but just wasn't fast enough. However, the flip side is for Sher Sherman, he definitely is someone who has that high football IQ and it's not like he's ever been the fastest corner to begin with. He's kind of known for being uh, a slower corner who can still make it work. So when you sort of factor that in with Sherman, even if he has potentially lost a step, he's still going to be very good. Also stuff like this where he can, you know, be a factor in the running game, right? Which again, this is stuff that Todd Bowles values is the run defense. And listen, uh, teams don't even really run the ball against Tampa Bay anymore because, I mean, mostly, uh, why would you run the ball when they have Vita Vea? I mean, that's just not a smart decision. He takes up three offensive linemen and kind of screws everything else up, not to mention the rest of the team very good. But Sherman is another guy who can play physical, and this can come into play on, like, screen passes. It can also come into play on something like this, where you're going to have a receiver kind of swing over from the other side of the field, and he's the guy who will eventually block Sherman. 
But right when this play starts, again, it's that high football IQ. Sherman reads this play well and is getting into the play very well. So this is something that, you know, some of these younger guys, like even guys I like, like Jamil Dean and Carlton Davis, might not be able to do this just because they won't read it as quickly because they're, you know, they're not as, uh, you know, they haven't been in the league as long as someone like Sherman has. So anyways, watch how Sherman finishes this play. He is going to be able to run over and make this tackle. So he does all that stuff very well, right? That's the stuff that I feel confident that he's still bringing to Tampa Bay, uh, even if you know, there is a bit of unknown. Like, listen, he wasn't signed this offseason. I think a big chunk of that was the off-the-field stuff. But still, uh, he is getting up there, wasn't signed right away. There's, It's fair to have some concerns about Sherman, for sure, about some of that stuff. But at the same time, that's the stuff that I think I feel strongly will be good. And there's one other aspect. Actually, I went back and watched some tape from just last week when the Buccaneers played the Rams, kind of you know seeing the difference between that two, those two things. And it was actually really fascinating to me. This play, this was very early on. And this is, when I watched this play, I'm like, okay, this is why they brought on Richard Sherman. Uh, this is going to be a cover three zone right here. Uh, you have a couple of routes that are sort of going towards the sideline. And what's really interesting about this for, for me is, so first off, kind of the narrative is that Todd Bowles never plays zone. Todd Bowles only plays man. That's not exactly true. Now, Todd Bowles blitzes a lot, and typically when you think about blitzing, you think that's man. Todd Bowles actually will run a good amount of zone blitzes, so that actually does kind of factor in, and Sherman can do this stuff. I think uh, one difference, and if you're you know not too into scheme, just so you know, one of the real reasons why it benefits Sherman to be in zone than in man is that speed matters less. You can kind of play off the line. Like, you see the two corners on this play. They're not exactly playing right on the, uh, you know, the uh, wide receivers. They're playing about seven yards off. That's what you do in zone. In man, you might be playing press, which is right in front of them, meaning that you're more subjective to be beat by speed. I mean, if you think about that play that Sammy Watkins burned Sherman on in the Super Bowl, that was a play like that, where Sherman was in press. In zone, you don't have to do that as much. You still can, but you don't have to do it as much. Anyways, back to this play. It's a simple concept that can beat zone. And one of the real issues for the Buccaneers and why I don't love seeing them play zone that much is they're just not that good at it. They're just not that, uh, you know, they don't make their, they don't do their assignments properly. And part of this is just it's a complex scheme. So they have to learn so much, not cover three zone, but the Todd Bowles scheme. There's so many different moving parts. It can be difficult to learn. But like on this play, so you have uh, a tight end who's going to run out to the flat and a wide receiver who's going to run a little bit deeper. And you would think that the corner on this play, Jamail Dean, takes the deeper route, uh, you know, a linebacker or safety, depending on who's over the middle of the field, runs over and takes away the tight end and the flat. However, right when this play starts, uh, one issue with this is that it's not exactly a blitz, but it kind of is. So it's still a four-man rush. But you have an outside linebacker dropping back in the coverage and Devin White blitzes. But still, you see the two players and who they should each be covering, right? So typically, the tight end in the flat, he might actually end up being a little bit more open just because sort of the rotation of this play, you're trying to disguise against the Rams. It's just not working out too well. But Dean ends up running further in, leaving another receiver wide open. That was Cooper Cup. And that was just, you know, that should have been complete right there. It was a bit of a high throw. Other than that, that's an easy first down. And, you know, Anton Winfield even says something to Dean after that. I believe it was uh, to Dean is who he was talking to. Uh, you got to be better than that for sure, right? And this is just one example. I could talk about more. I really could. But the reality is the Buccaneers have tried to play more and more zone. I think their logic is we have this great defensive line. Let's try and take advantage of that a little bit. Well, uh, the issue is that when they try to play zone, guys just get open immediately. So they really need to struggle with that. And I think that they're a defense that they like to be able to play any type of coverage. And so at the very least, Sherman could come in and sit situational plays, right? If it's third and 10, okay, well now we can just play cover three zone and Sherman comes in. Whereas if it's, you know, first and 10, maybe we have our better man corners in there and play some man. You can do that situationally, which I think helps a lot. The reality is they do need someone basically to just come in and say, hey, you got to get over there. Like forget knowing your assignment, but help out other people know their assignment. That kind of stuff can really blend together. So it's not just that you're getting a player who knows his role, but a player who can help other people know their role. I mean, you know, clearly like with Tom Brady, there is that element of player leadership 
in Tampa Bay, at least on the offensive side of the ball, this can kind of make it with the defensive side of the ball a little bit as well. So we'll see how well that works. So yeah, as a whole, I like the signing. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.